Hey everybody, Dr. Cody here. If you haven't noticed, there's been an explosion of brain devices on the market lately. This episode will be unique because we're gonna take a look at the market forces at play here that lead me to believe that we're in for some massive technological brain tech changes in the next five to 10 years. And what you can do right now to prepare yourself to be a leader in any given field using brain tech. Hey everybody, welcome to Tech vs. Psych. I'm telling you, this video is for you. We're talking about you, and I know you maybe better than you know yourself. You are an innovator or an early adopter. You know how I know that? It's because you're listening to this video in which I'm talking about mobile brain-computer interface devices that are not yet mainstream. Mainstream penetration into the market as defined by Maloney's 16% rule means that before something really goes mainstream, it's taken up by the front end of a bell curve, 2.5% of the population being innovators, 13.5% of the population being early adopters. And then you get this chasm that opens up that goes between the people that actually enjoy using devices before everybody else and get excited by the scarcity of them because no one has really used these technologies before, followed by um, criticisms about how effective they actually can be and, and how people actually justify crossing the chasm of the price point to be able to use in their everyday lives, then you get the early majority of 34% of people. Designing this framework of understanding where these brain computer interfaces are coming in to the market. There's a lot of resources out there. There's Tipping Point by Malcolm Gladwell. There's Crossing the Chasm by Jeffrey Moore. The Fusion of Innovations by Everett Rogers is another good resource. These books are all speaking about how these devices can break into the mainstream. And I really started thinking about this uh, way back. Peter Diamandis is one of my favorite authors. He wrote Bold, in which he talked about the Gartner hype cycle. The Gartner hype cycle is this maturation process that new technologies go through when they're introduced into the market. There's an innovation trigger, and we saw that about 10 years ago, where Emotive came out with their first product, the Epoch, and Neurosky was soon to come out with their wearable EEG system as well. And that caused this innovation trigger. There was a peak of inflated expectations. Everybody thought that these devices were gonna revolutionize what we do. You're gonna be able to control a robotic arm with your mind just in a couple of years. But then you experience something called the trough of delusionment in which it becomes obvious that this technology needs many years to mature. And we've seen that. We've seen second, third, fourth, generation EEG wearable devices come out. Companies like Emotive, Muse, Dream, Macrotelect, these all have been working diligently on the technology and making them better and better. And I really feel like 2021 is a turning point, not only because these companies are coming out with their next generation devices, but there's also a new price point that's coming into the picture. Companies like Kernel, Open Water, iMedisync, these are all designing the new next generation devices that are really, really exciting. In particular, I'm really excited about Kernel. We'll dive into the stats here in a little bit. I'm gonna be going out to LA this summer to interview one of the researchers that will be using a Kernel device. So I'm really excited to show you guys actual footage of me using the hardware and software and giving you the firsthand account of how effective this new technology will be as I transition out of the Navy as a physician over the next six months and move to Las Vegas, I'm gonna have good access to the Consumer Electronics Show and be able to show you, the audience, all these devices that are coming online and really changing the landscape for brain-computer interface. We're really taking a look at brain-computer interface reaching a new level of data fidelity within the next five years, and then potentially be very mainstream by the end of the decade. Uh, Brian Johnson of Kernel said that, you know, in taking a look at their device, what they've been able to achieve with their level of data fidelity currently, dare they imagine that there'll be a brain computer interface device in every home by 2033. So I love my audience, you guys are so awesome, and I want you to start thinking about how you can be an industry leader in your own niche, whether you are in advertising, healthcare, education. Brain computer interface is gonna to touch every facet of human life, and I think that what's great is that because you are either an innovator or an early adopter at this stage before these things go mainstream, you can really start setting yourself up to be a subject matter expert in your own niche for brain computer interface. And what I would encourage you to do is what Peter Diamandis encourages is 
define your moonshot goal. What is a goal so big in your life that when you think about it, you just get so excited to get up every morning. You know you're gonna completely transform your relative niche and you know what's coming. I'm really biased, but I see this field as being as big as the personal computer and the smartphone revolutions. Just imagine if you looked off into the distance, maybe you were in 1969 and you saw that the personal computer was going to be the next big thing and you had five or 10 years to prepare for that, you know, on the likes of Jobs and Gates just seeing this massive revolution coming. That is where I really feel like we are in Brain Computer Interface. It's five to 10 years out, but it's really coming quickly. And some big research firms have really changed their tune in regards to this. I mentioned Gartner with the Gartner Hype Cycle. Gartner is a global wide research and consulting firm that takes a look at emerging technologies and tries to predict and determine when they are gonna be coming into prominence. And Gartner is this global research and consulting firm. And I actually found out about them through Peter Dumandis's bold book. So I've been taking a look at them for some time, trying to figure out where brain computer interface is coming into the whole picture. And what I've noticed is that, you know, I showed you that Gartner hype cycle curve. The Gartner hype cycle curves between 2017 and 2020 showed brain computer interfaces this, you know, ominous orange triangle that said that the technologies were more than 10 years from reaching that plateau of productivity where they become mainstream. But in 2020, they changed from that orange triangle to a blue circle. And that blue circle says, instead of over 10 years away, this technology is coming to mainstream within five to 10 years. And that is obviously really incredibly exciting to me because you know I'm positioning myself as a subject matter expert on this technology on YouTube, but also as a medical provider. And I think that you can do that too in your own respective niche. And I want us all to be collaborating. And I would love to do a Tech for Psych discussion board so that everybody on the channel can start collaborating a little bit more and building ideas. And you guys let me know what would be uh, best for that in the comment section below. Either what's better, Facebook, Reddit, what's a great uh, communication platform? Should I have something on the Tech for Psych website? You guys let me know. I'd love to start hearing more from you. I know I, I get individual emails all the time, but I would love more of a discussion format where I can curate the discussions and we can start um, thinking about this productively. So if you're listening to this right now, I want you to recognize that you are an innovator. You are an early adopter that you see this revolution coming way before it actually does, and you do have the power to become a subject matter expert in brain-computer interface in your own industry. And one of the things that Peter Diamandis likes to do is illustrate what might the future look like in five to 10 years. So I'm gonna do that a little bit. We're gonna present three little case studies that give you an idea of where this brain-computer interface technology could be headed. So what if you have your eight-year-old child in school and they're having difficulty concentrating, right? And the teacher says, okay, you need to take them to a psychiatrist to be evaluated. What happens normally these days? You take them to the psychiatrist, the psychiatrist, you know, lists off a number of different symptoms and says, hey, they have trouble concentrating, trouble organizing, you know, we're going to put them on Adderall and they're going to uh, diagnose them with ADHD and put them on Adderall. Well, what if instead of that, you take the child to the clinic and then you do a functional brain scan. So you use near infrared light to not only get the blood flow patterns of the brain, but you also get the structural patterns of the brain. So you're taking a look at how the myelin is set up. You're taking a look at the connections of the brain. You are having the child go through different cognitive exercises or maybe even watching a recording of the teachings from the class while they had the helmet on and you are making educated analyses of how their brain is functioning when they are actually learning. And what perhaps the physician finds is that instead of uh, deficits in the attentional circuitry of the brain in the frontal lobe, they say, hey, actually what's happening is the amygdala is firing up a lot during class. The, the fight or flight response is activating. This is not uh, ADHD attentional difficulty. This is actually anxiety. And what this is actually from, from subjective questions that they ask the child is they figure out it's actually separation anxiety, that the child is nervous at class, they can't calm down because they're not at home. And instead of loading them up on pharmaceuticals, they actually refer them to a therapist, which uh, that therapist then you know practices relaxation techniques with the child. 
And then since you've got the structural brain scan and the more high fidelity data in the clinic, you can actually have the child just wear a wearable into the classroom and monitor and track changes over time to show that the therapy is actually helping them. Um, and then, you know, their grades go up and they're doing better in school because they actually got the correct diagnosis from objective data rather than just filling in check boxes like they do in the DSM. If you're a healthcare provider or if you're in education, that could be an example of how these brain scans are really going to help people, not only in mental health diagnoses, but also in education. Another example is in self-development or career counseling, you could have a young adult go in and get hooked up to these brain scan devices, near infrared spectroscopy or magnetic encephalography or EEG, depending on what technologies proved to be um, the highest data fidelity. You could actually show them different experiences, and I think that VR would be really great for this. Show them what it's like to be in a band. Show them what it's like to do art. Show them what it's like to be an engineer and see how the brain lights up to those different experiences and use that data to help coach help guide that young adult into a career path that they might uh, do very well in based on their brain functioning when they are shown these different experiences. And obviously it's not going to be perfect right when the technology comes into prominence, but it will at least help give people better ideas, better guidance about what their career path might be, what they might do best in so that they can best, you know, do their self-development, be a self-actualized person. Actually, a movie that I really appreciated that I watched the other day is Disney's Soul. You can find it on uh, the Disney Plus channel. And uh, that was such a fun example of taking a look at what people's different interests are. And I won't ruin the story for you, but you could watch that movie and imagine how brain scans could actually facilitate that process for people figuring out what they are passionate about and guiding their brains to be the best possible at what they do. And obviously a huge opportunity in brain computer interface would be in gaming. And what could happen is that you're in a gaming environment using AR or VR, and instead of just using controls to control your character, actually how you feel is going to control your character as well. And I just think about like, what if you had this virtual reality Dragon Ball Z game where, you know, you can punch and kick, but your level of power actually depends on your brain activation patterns. So it actually would teach people to meditate and get into state better so that their character would become more powerful so that they could get through the game better so you could really tie in meditative techniques into a virtual reality experience and teach people how to be more present and meditate better through a really fun VR gaming experience in which you use these brain scans to facilitate that as well. So I think the Gartner hype cycle is really interesting it's a good indicator at where the industry is thinking brain computer interface is headed pretty soon here in the next five to ten years but I think it's a little unidimensional meaning that there's different layers to this. We already have devices that are high enough data fidelity to do some good neurofeedback work using. Over the next five to 10 years, we're actually gonna have diagnostic capabilities and brain could be interface where you can uh, take a look at uh, cursors like in NextMind and have uh, the software respond to your vision by analyzing the activation patterns in your occipital cortex and be able to actually imagine different symbols to get the brain computer interface to respond to you. And Neurosity system is working on that where you have the kinesis feature where you can imagine different things like closing your pincher fingers or thinking about biting into a lemon to get software to respond to you. I showed that in my last video. So that's really going to be the next five to 10 years is diagnostics and brain computer interface of controlling software. And then beyond that, you get into really wild sci-fi stuff in which you are projecting images onto the screen from your mind or you are writing text on your computer just by thinking. And I'm not sure if that level of data fidelity is going to take implantable devices like Elon Musk's Neuralink is doing or on the side of what Mary Lou Jepsen and Open Water would argue is that we can use near-infrared light to reach that level of data fidelity with a non-invasive device. The jury's still out on that, but I think in the next five to 10 years, there is going to be an incredible amount of market potential and opportunities there to take advantage of if you see them coming, and it's gonna to touch every facet of human life. So if you have ideas, please put them in the comments below. I'm really curious to hear how this uh, video is received. I re really wanna hear from everybody on this video. So my name's Dr. Cody Rall. This is Tech for Psych, and I am so excited for the next five to 10 years as I transition into this YouTube channel full-time and bring you the latest and greatest in neurotechnologies 
and combine them with ancient wisdom so that you can supercharge your brain. This is Dr. Cody Roll with Tech for Psych. See you next time.